All right, so we're going to give this another try. You all, all Sunday, I've been trying to make this video and to post it. And I've been unsuccessful, like, each and every time. And even now, like, I've, I've deleted my voiceovers so many times. I am mentally weary. So I pray. Heavenly Father, I really need your 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 guidance. Well, I know I know I have your guidance. I know that you will strengthen me. I know that you will come through and you will speak the things that need to be said and spoken of so that you can bless this um, you know, friend of mine in particular as far as this top this topic. And any further questions of concern, um, I know that, you know, you will lead the person to, to ask, you know, more things or, you know, whatever the case may be. So I just thank you, Father God. Thank you for another day. Thank you for providing us with, you know, breath to breathe and just strengthening us in our weaknesses. We bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so I spoke with a person um, on Sunday as I was watching Pastor Tim Henderson's sermon on Romans chapter 6 as God led him to speak on. And the title said, We Are No Longer Slaves to Sin. Amen. That is so true and um, a very helpful reminder and confirmation, something that needs to be, you know, said, you know, over and over again so that our conscience will be clear, you know, towards God. So, um, just real quick. So when we sin, we are saved. Yes, we are saved. We are kept. When we sin, um, like it's like if somebody is living a lifestyle of fornication or if somebody is an active murderer or, you know, things of that nature, if that person believes that the blood of Jesus Christ has washed them of all their sins and that they have faith in the blood of Jesus and that it is by grace alone, through faith alone, that makes them the righteousness of God, that person is saved. But if that person turns around and chooses to use their vessels as instruments of wickedness, you know, being an active fornicator or a murderer. Like I said earlier, their consciousness will be, like, fogged. It will be the clarity, like, the, the fellowship of God won't be as, like, you know, obvious, you know, to the person. The person will be more subjective to feeling their feelings they'll feel like oh I'm you know they'll feel more guilty or they'll feel um you know just bad you know about themselves so um yeah I just wanted to say that real quick so as far as dreams dreams are biblical and um God will speak to us in a dream and in Matthew chapter 2 verse 12 and 13 it shows how God spoke to the, the wise men, telling and um, warning them to not to return to Herod, because Herod sought to kill baby Jesus. And in verse 13, God turned around and warned Joseph, the father of, of Jesus, you know, on earth. God told Joseph to flee into Egypt for them to be safe. So God, um, I wrote in my notes on the side, dreams from God, they can reveal a matter. He can warn us and he can instruct us. So reveal and warn is kind of like the same thing. So um, we can have dreams from God. We can have um, random dreams or dreams that come from our, our subconscious. So say you... You was thinking about like noodles all day and you end up going to sleep and you just have a dream about, you know, noodles, like a room full of noodles. 
and you're like smiling because you're happy you have a room full of noodles <laughs> like random dreams like that like that comes from like subconscious mind and then there are dreams where it seems like you're being quote unquote attacked but I will call these like dreams that try to tempt you so um those dreams basically is a deeper look, a deeper insight on what it looks like when the enemy, you know, speaks, speaks things, you know, to your mind. All of our thoughts are not, you know, our own thoughts. And, you know, the enemy, he can come, you know, whispering, um, trying to condemn you, trying to make you feel guilty trying to get you focused on anything but the saving knowledge of the saving grace of Jesus Christ. So, um, so yeah. So those are three categories of, of dreams. Um, as far as a demon, like, physically, seriously hurting you in your dream, God will not allow that. You are saved and you are kept and there's no need to feel like you cannot overcome, you know, that wickedness. So I know a lot of people say they have sleep paralysis and I found out for myself, like if I'm sleeping in an awkward position or like say like I can, it's more difficult for me to sleep on my back because I start to lose my breathing because of how my neck or my head is aligned. So if I do sleep on my back, I have to have the pillow propped up in a certain way. And if I start to slip down or something, in my dream, I will notice like, um, like something bad will happen in my dream. And it will cause me to like, you know, like wake up like, oh my goodness, no. So, um, so yeah. Um, sorry, my mind is scrambled everywhere. Okay, so. I had a lot to say about this. I'm sorry. I've been, <laughs> I was prepared like all day. And now I have a moment of silence. All my children are asleep and it's like. <laughs> my brain is just like, who? So. Those dreams that, you know, it seems like the enemy is like sitting on you or, you know, holding you down or the enemy is uh, like you see some type of ugly creature. You just sense tenseness of, of darkness all around you. These things are just to provoke you to be fearful. So we know that God does not, God has not given us the spirit of fear. Why has he not given us the spirit of fear? Because we don't have the spirit of Satan in us. We have the spirit of Christ in us. And what is that? It is a power of love and of a sound mind. That is who Christ is. So we have the spirit of Christ in us. We have been given the spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit. So um, any dream that is not, you know, that is like any dream that is condemning you or making you feel guilty or afraid, that is not from God. God will not um, provoke you or tempt you with evil. He doesn't do it. He will allow certain things, yes, to come across our path for the perfecting of his will. And he will turn any bad thing around for his good to glorify his name. But um, as far as being, like, seriously, like, attacked and hurt by a demon, no. A safe person, no, that that won't happen. That's, that's where I stand on that. So, um, the dream, I'm going to start with the dream that I had on, on Saturday night, and I woke up Sunday morning. So, the dream was, I was... It was as if I was watching a movie. It was as if I was watching myself. So I was um, looking 
at this deep, dark purple creature. The body was very buff and very hefty. And it had on like a black, uh, like bulletproof type of a vest. And the head, basically I saw the literal brain of this creature. Saw the left hemisphere, the right hemisphere, the grooves, you know, the lines and stuff in the brain. And I saw a snout. Um, very similar to a lizard or some type of reptile like that. And as this creature was speaking, it had a very deep, heavy voice. And there was a long, like, purple tongue that was, like, that would, like, slither out. Like, as it was talking, like, the tongue was, like, flicking. And I saw a sharp teeth. And as this creature was speaking, I sensed fear, like, overwhelming me. And, um... It was basically saying, I have the power to override your mind. And it started to, you know, continue talking um, strongly, you know, all these lies. So as this creature began to speak so strongly about this lie, <coughs> excuse me, it started to grow, like, taller than me. And... I was intimidated by it. So all of a sudden, it was as if I was watching myself. I can't explain it, but I saw myself speaking about how victorious Jesus is. So I started saying, Jesus has the name above every name. Jesus is far above every principality, every power, every throne. And I kept speaking about who Jesus is and, you know, his power. And as I was speaking like this, this, um, this ugly creature, it started to shrink and then it disappeared. So that was the end of that dream. So when I woke up from the dream Sunday morning, I was like, why did I have that dream? Um... I was just like, what was the like point or purpose of it? And I was considering whether or not I should do a video about it, but really didn't have anything, like a, a good reason to put it out there. So I just kept it, you know, hidden on my heart. So I ended up fellowshipping with a person on Sunday. And um, in the chat room, as I was watching Pastor Tim Henderson's sermon on Romans chapter 6, and the title was called, um, We Are No Longer Slaves to Sin. So in my dream, like that creature was talking to me as if it owned me. And at first I was like listening and I was allowing, you know, fear to overwhelm me. But like five seconds later, I sensed, you know, the power of Christ just rising up in me and speaking against that and just speaking on the truth. You know, that, you know, Jesus is is the one who's victorious. You know, Jesus is strong, you know, you know. And um, so when I spoke with this person um, in the chat room, they asked if a saved person could be attacked in a dream by a demon. So that's what really, um, f like, further inspired me to make this video. Um, I may turn around and throw more scriptures about about dreams and such, um, you know, into another video. Forgive me, I was very distracted, and it was difficult making this video. At least, I, I redid this video seven times because of, um, you know, interferences. So I'm just hoping that this goes through. And in short, you know, you don't have anything to worry about. You are kept and you are safe. God is our good shepherd. He watches over you when you're asleep. He watches over you when you're awake. Anything bad that does come your way, God allows it to come your way to the perfecting of his will. And to just really let you know that he is with you no matter what it is that you're going through he wants you to know that his grace is sufficient for you and um 
in our weakness, he is made strong. So let us glory in our weaknesses. As the Apostle Paul say in, um, I think it's 2 Corinthians chapter 12. You know, let us glory in our infirmities and such. Let us glory in these trials and sufferings. Because those are moments of weaknesses that it's the perfect opportunity for the strength and the glory of God to shine. So, um, yeah, I just want to encourage you with that. I plan to be back, I don't know how soon, with um, scripture further speaking on on dreams. Um, so I hope that that helped, and I hope I mentioned what I, what I plan to. So, um, shalom, and let me know if you have any other questions. Um, you know who I'm talking to <laughs> in particular. All right, God bless.